started, I always do these on my show, and I always put out books so people can read and reference. Don't take what Taj or myself say. Y'all have pens and papers. Look up everything. Question us on everything. We're not like most of these so-called scholars or teachers out here. We say question us, research it, come back. And we do classes every week on 1901 Atlantic Avenue also in Long Beach. We do classes, civics classes at 7 o'clock every week. But um, there's a couple of books that I want to throw up before we get started. And I got I to gotta throw a question out there for everybody, see if they can answer it. This is a book that everybody must have. How many people are familiar with 100 Amazing Facts About the Negro? Everybody should be familiar with this book. In this book, it speaks about the Moors. We were Ethiopians and Moors before the 1500s, before we were called so-called blacks. It's in his book. All right? Another book, great book, is called, and mine is kind of beat up. You can tell I'll be reading this book, right? Ancient and Modern Brits, written in 1884. Speaks about us also in this book in 1800s. Why aren't they teaching this to our people? And they tells you, but we were remembered as Moors in Britain. Okay? Another great book is 100 Amazing Facts. Um, actually, Nature Knows No Color Line. J.A. Rogers. Rogers. Get these books, research them, and then start challenging these so-called scholars also. And also, before we get started, I have to give a thanks to Karen McGee that's in the hallway. Your host is out there. I will be your host Karen. this evening. Let's give a shout out to Karen. Because without her, a lot of this stuff wouldn't go down. She's, I'm just the, go, the guy to go get everything done. And actually... Brother Keith Washington is actually at the front door also, without those two, because we brought like five people to California, and I'm glad to see a lot of young people in the room. And this is what we need, because I was going to turn around and leave. <laughs> I'm serious. We don't at least have three of them. I'm walking. We have another one back there. I'll leave. But we have to deal with the youth, okay? And also, people that's looking at, um, looking at this also, because this, again, we're projecting ourselves into the future. Peace to my Zulu Nation family also, yeah. because I'm, I'm also Zulu. Yeah. African Mbada says, peace and blessings. Actually, peace and blessings is what he says. Not blessings, blessings. Because bless, bless means blood sacrifice. Okay. Oh, yeah, y'all going to get it in. We got etymology DVDs back there, too. So yeah. we're going to get it in. Um, before we get started... I have a giveaway. This is actually a promo for a reality show with KRS One and I at the radio station. If someone in this room can name the name of this country, actually, my other, my other co host just walked in the room. Peace, Brother Sal. What's up, Sal? Come here, Brother Sal, real quick, bro. Come here, man. This is actually the one, he, he the one that kicked me off doing the radio show. That brother right there. Come on up here for a minute, brother. He is the one that kicked me off and supported me 100%. When nobody else did, this brother did. Look at it. <laughs> brother Sal. So when you see these guys, those are the ones that make the Sabir Bay show work. And Jessica Abraham. Now, before we get started, can anybody give me the name of this country? Let's go to the young one. Say that, come here, man. Come here, man. See, let me show you how smart the children are. Say that again. His father taught him very well. Say it again. California. California, he said. California. I know that's kind of threw you off, didn't it? Y'all was going to say America, didn't you? We all study civics, right? America's a continent with three of them. The country is California with that flag right there, which they call states. Get your lessons together. Here you go, brother. <laughs> Round of applause and thank his father back there. This is what we do in the Moore's Order of the Round Table. We teach basic fundamental principles of civics, which is lost in school today. That's what we do. But before now, listen, y'all. Y'all got to stand to your feet. Listen, y'all have a living, a living legend amongst y'all right now. But this brother right here, real quick story, how I met this brother. I studied under a brother by the name of Kamar Gabriel. Y'all may not know him because he's not around right now. This brother I studied under for three years before I met this. You know how you see Matrix? You see the Matrix? When, when, when he was ready, he took him to the Oracle, remember? That's how it was with me. I was a Muslim. I'm not going to lie. I had a beard down here, the kufi on, the skirt on. I mean, excuse me, the jala beard on. I had that on. That's what I was looking like. And a brother walked with one of those on his head. And I said, brother, what's that hell on your head? He said, hat? That's not a hat. That's a national headdress. I'm like, okay. 
This was 15 years ago. I was strictly in Sunni Islam, hard. You couldn't tell me nothing, nothing. This brother said, come to my house. I'm going to talk to you. When I walked in his house, he studied under Brother Taj. No, he studied under Taj. He took me to a library. All Moors must have libraries in their house. He had a library in his house. The first word he told me to look up was Indian and tore the word apart. The word Indian meant indigo, which meant dark people. I was like, oh, wait a minute. You mean, it? you know, this is the teaching. Studied under his brother for three years before I met him. And I kept saying, I want to meet him. He said, you're not ready. This is what he said to me. You're not ready. Three years, I was going out challenging cops the whole nine yards. This is what I was doing because I was arrogant at the time because I got the information. But it was three years I studied. And he took me to Camden, New Jersey, where we used to have classes every, what, Friday was a, Wednesday, Friday. Wednesday, Fridays, and Sundays. Every week. He took me there, and I met this brother. I was dumbfounded, like, yo, I was like, wait a minute, hold on a minute. Like, really? You know, but it made, they made you feel comfortable there. You know what I mean? It made you feel comfortable. And from that point on, I've been rolling with this brother right here. I said, yo, you need to be heard worldwide. And that's when I got my chance to do radio, I brought him on. Everything that I do, I brought this brother in for the past 15 years. And thanks to brother Kamar Gabriel, and brother Todd to everybody because he remembered my son was one years old. My son is 16 now, actually. But, yes, I have a son 16. I have one older than that, too. Don't get it twisted. <laughs> um, but ever since then, I've been bringing this brother around every chance I have. But listen, y'all, stand to your feet because y'all are on a, actually an educational and informational journey. Let's give it up for my brother, my teacher, my living legend. Brother Taj Tariq Bay in California. Peace. Listen. Peace. Come Peace. right. Thank I'm you. telling you, that's all I'm going to tell you right now. If you up to challenge him, you will lose. I'm going to tell you this. You will lose. So grab a pen, piece of paper, get your notes. And get to work. Cross your T's and dot your I's. And get to work. Because he may go over your heads. I'm the kind of guy to bring it down here, but he's up here. But follow him. He's going to be kind of funny sometimes. I'm trying to tell you that. Thank you, good But I want to bring my brother, Taj Tariq Bay, up you, to the brother. front so we can get this thing. Oh, he got his own OJ. That's not an OJ, OJ. Yeah. That is um, <laughs> OJ. Much more. Fresh. Islam. Let's bring my brother, Taj Tariq Bay, up to Islam. the front, y'all, so we can brother. get it in. Thank you, good brother. Yes, yes, yes. I want to. Um, Thanks, Sabir and Karen, for the hard work they've been doing. And, um, yes. And this is a beautiful place, isn't it? Isn't it, yeah. you all? And I just want to bring this to everybody's attention. Y'all want to make sure it gets to that, right? Yeah. Right? Yeah. All right. It is certainly worthy. We won't cut through the chase because our time is very short, and, but I want you to take notes, challenge everything I say. First, all mothers rise, please, in the house. Even the little ones. We want to give you honor for bringing us here. We already know that all Asiatic African countries and culture is matriarchal, not patriarchal. We're kind of messed up a little bit, you all, because we have started following after Rome and we've mixed the dogma of the papacy into the principles of ancient Asia and Africa. That's basically where we're messed up uh, as far as our mental problems and our divisions. But we know that no one gets here except through the Stargate. So we want to thank you all for bringing us here. Thank you, mothers. Thank you. And know that nothing is done without the counsel of the woman. So when you all start getting back in government, you better get right. Because divine law does not recognize person or station. And we've been violating the law. What we're going to do today is real quick for those, we know that COINTELPRO operations are um, in order at all times. Any Asiatic African organizations that set up to begin to free or liberate people 
they will always have infiltration. So don't be surprised. All right. I'm going to make a couple of notes to prepare you for the connections that we're going to make. Take notes because I'm going to connect you back to the estate because there's a lot of things that you need to be doing, particularly last year. But let's jump ahead a little bit. I want you to write this down anyway. House Joint Resolution 2847. And this is where the United States Corporation, the religious corporation of the United States company, which is not the, not the, uh, the land, understand it's a private religious organization belonging to the Popes of Rome. They're gonna be stealing all your bank accounts. July the 1st, because the worlds are turning in all of their T-bonds. Do you understand? And so you're going to have to learn a little bit about estate because you lost your estate. So you're going to have to learn law, international law, to begin to protect yourselves and your families. Put away water and food so you can survive at least six months. We won't even get into that right now, but don't think it's fake because these Romans are going to try to starve you out. So let's not even play games with this thing. Uh, I want to make a point to you so that you know one of the Masonic secrets that Obama exposed. When he went to Hikupta, Hikupta is the proper name of Egypt. That's not Egypt. That's a sociological name. We use it just like anything else. We come to people where they are, but the adepts are to take them where they should be. Are we clear? Yeah. All right. Um, give you an example. The land you're standing on is Morocco. This is the flag that's been on this land over 70,000 years. From ancient Amexum, central old Africa is old Amexum. That's the Yucatan area and is referred to by the sociologists as Old Mech. That's old Amexum. The ancient um, scientific complexes there, actually in Mexico, the technology took place in Mexico, and the um, genetic uh, um, research was done, or what you call the um, eugenics, took place more in Patagonia. Patagonia today is called Argentina. This is where the hybrid was made that is referred to in the book of Genesis uh, chapter 25, with, um, when, when uh, Isaac asked Allah that his wife was barren and that uh, we hook her up and she bared two sons, two children, but they're not twins, they're two different nations. That is a little bit of information on the hybrid experience that, uh, experiments and the technology that was formulated at Pedro Negra, that's in Mexico, and the technology was carried out in Patagonia, which is Argentina, and that's where your red man was made, who is known today as the Roman. That has been the source of the world's problems for quite a couple thousand years right now. Not quite farther than that. But um, because people don't know the real history of humanity, we're kind of confused. And because some history is held back from you by those who rule on both sides, people have become hateful with each other. They become divided. They um, think races. There's no races. There's one race is called the human race. And the human race is expanded into families, which are called nations and nationalities. And logically, cutting through that chase with the, um, with the great um, Red chieftains who set up the order of the Francis, uh, Franciscan Brotherhood for the overthrow of the Moorish Empire is the source of the world's problems today across the planet. So I want you to write this down so that for anyone who thinks they can challenge this information, it's, it's available. They, all scholars know this stuff. But understand, uh, sometimes when people get caught into paths and they find out certain information, they're limited or they have a reluctance to reveal that information because it proves them as being frauds right along with the European. Do you, do you understand? Just like, for instance, the, the paradigm, how many people know Carlos Linné? Carlos, Carol Luz Linné. He's referred to in history as Carl Linnaeus. 
He is one of the Maltas that set up the code system for the phenotypes that is used today. This is where those um, overseer scholars get this black-white paradigm from. That's totally fictitious. It's for servitude. Are we clear? For instance, like when our people agree to be black people, they come under the Christian black codes that were set up in 1868 when they closed the Freedmen's Bureau. That's an agreement, and those codes apply. That's where your abuse comes from, because there's no such people. It's a code system for Christian property. Doing this, human beings aren't crayons, but some adults have difficulty handling that. But that's the truth. So we're going to deal with some history. We're going to deal with law. Understand that law and history goes together. Law and history goes together. All scholars know this fact. But keep in mind that when you're dealing with what you call truths, political truths on the human condition, it has a tendency not to generate a lot of finance for the pockets of the leader guys. And so they have a tendency to suppress that kind of history because it can't be sold. It's birthright issues. Do you, do you understand? And so they usually will sell you things that get you emotionally charged and where they can collect finance but cure nothing. Are we clear? Yes. Yes. So we're going to talk about some things today that, uh, that you can use when you start getting in trouble, like when the, um, when the Inquisition has come after you. Under the Spanish Inquisition with Torquemada and the rest for the collections of the, of the uh, tithing for the Roman army, it is called the Inquisition Revenue Services. It was set up, uh, solidified in a corporate entity by Woodrow Wilson to counter Noble Drali in 1913 to 1916, and that's the Federal Reserve, and the Internal Revenue Services is really the Inquisition Revenue Services. It's a tax for the Popes of Rome. The 1040 form that they, have you set, that they have you sign or set up during the entry of Estarte, that's the entry of the crescent and the star when the Venus and the moon comes into the eastern sky, they call it East Star. The star is now in the east. During that time, you've got to pay the queen. And so the 1040 that you've been signing, that you've been, that so-called tax for the Internal Revenue Service, Goes 40% goes to the Queen of England, 60% goes to Rome. Not a penny goes to your children, not a penny goes to your streets. That's why you're broke. And it has nothing to do with the republic that was set up by the Moors and some Europeans to stop the wars between the Christians and the Muslims, which is really what the United States Republic actually is, the beacon light that was set up by agreement to stop the hundreds of years of wars between the Moors and the Christians. That's your connection to this said government. Are we clear? Fine. That is not the national flag. That's the flag of amity and commerce. That's the national flag. Or do you understand? Yeah. Now, I'm going to give you a few keys for you to understand. And understand that you're, you're, right now you're standing in Mexico. North, North, North America, Central America, is Moors and Mexicans. We're to the north. Mexico is to the south. They're your family. Do you understand? The only alien here is Europeans. No, you got to get that straight. Don't, don't abuse the knowledge and don't reject people. Don't make them feel bad, but don't let them play that game with you that your family is aliens. And so when they start calling your brothers and sisters aliens, you correct them on the spot. Because when they steal their birthright, they're stealing your birthright. Do you understand? So welcome to Mexico. Welcome to Queen Khalifa's territory, because it was named after Queen Khalifa. She was a Moabite queen. She ruled this whole area. She was actually one of the last of the ones, of the, of the fighters to die of the, from the empire, yes. So you gotta really know your real history. And then uh, a lot of Asiatics know this, but if they tell that real history, they can't, they can't keep on promoting the diaspora, which is partly fiction. Because they, they didn't bring us from anywhere. We were already here. We were here for thousands of years. You know, um, and of course, the land, the land, all the land or the earth we call Asia. And we came from Asia, went into lower Asia Minor, and called it Africa. 
this is why you refer to as Asiatics. And everybody knows that, but that kind of spoils the game that they've been playing on our people. You see the point? Because they've structured history in such a way to distort history that even in the quest of getting out of the European jurisdiction, they told more lies. And then once they're caught, they don't want to back up and clean this mess up. But in real law, you can't lie and get something positive out of it. All it does is give the European excuse for mandate. This is why the Europeans still ruling, because we're full of doo-doo. No, it's true. And people, you know, uh, we have limited courage to just tell the truth and recognize that all of the problems of humanity is not just the Europeans' fault. It's also our fault for violating our own law, for violating our own principles. You know what I mean? And so we fell. So you need to know the real history so that you must rise where you fell. And you must rise with honor. So you must come into this knowledge with love and not hate. Does not mean that you're supposed to let somebody kick your butt. But don't come in this thing with hate because you're not innocent. Do you, do you understand what I'm saying to you? And so while the Europeans are uh, under the Pope and the um, Hasidic, who are cl claiming to be Jews or not Jews, there's no such thing as Jew. It's Yahudi. We're Yahudi. Do you understand? Um, Jay didn't come into the language to the 1500s. You know, um, so we are the ones who crossed the river anciently from the ancient pharaohs of Hikupta. And those of us who crossed the river are falsely referred to as Jews. It's not Jews, it's not who we are, it's what we did. Do you understand? And, that, and people are confused when they go into the Bible and stuff like that and think it's a different people. We're the same people. Like they say, Ham and Cush, son, father and son, it's the same family, it ain't different people. You know, and now the sociologists call us Semitic. That's a term that was made by German sociologists. It's not original, but that is in reference to Asiatic African peoples of the Nile Valley and out. Do you understand? So when they start calling you anti-Semitic, they're saying you're against yourself. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, so I mean, that's to, to remove the confusion. Um, and understand that the Romans, the Europeans who call themselves Jews, are most of the Europeans that took over the Yetta, that's the areas, that, the wealthy areas in Europe that the Moors ruled before the Romans ran the Moors out of Europe on 1492 with the Pontifex of 1492 and Intercaterra Divina 1493, which makes the policies of the politics of the planet Earth today. The enforcement of those, those uh, bullets from the church um, are enforced by what is known as the Secret Treaty of Verona, which you can find in your co congressional records. Write that down, Secret Treaty of Verona. This is the basis of the interior overthrow of the republic and the setup of the demo system referred to as a democracy in 1933 with Skull and Bones member, Lyndon, um, not Lyndon Mays Johnson, uh, Franklin Delano Roosevelt to put a capstone on what Wilson did in 1913, uh, which was also done by certain traders in 1780, no, 1871, when they uh, incorporated, turned the republic into a corporation in order to put the Moors later, uh, as they did earlier, solidify the 14th Amendment artificial person in the state of Delaware as Christian property. This is why such persons is called Negro, Black, and Coloreds, and what do they call themselves this week, can't vote with them names that don't belong to them, except that the overseer, or what you call the CEO, through the Senate, agrees that their cattle can vote as three-fifths persons because they have no name and nationality. When you understand these, the history from a law perspective, your view will change from it just being some historical flaw or some little dirty trick that the Europeans do, you would need to understand its political ramifications. Because you transact business in another man's name, don't talk about estates and don't talk about property because you don't even own your own body. And this is where, under the Christian Black Codes, where they set up where the marriage license is registered in the Department of Commerce, then registered in the Department of Orphans, and this is where your children, even before they're born, become wards of the state, which is a legal term for nice slave. And see, nobody's offended because they know that most of our people don't read law, and so they just hear the word, and it's, it's interesting, you know. 
And then the scholars ain't going to tell them because they playing this black game. Do you understand? When they know these people aren't black. Also, I want you and um, I want you to go. I want you to uh, write down black, and I want you to go into Oxford Dictionary, and I'm going to show you why they don't have hardcover Oxford Dictionaries in communities where persons of color exist, because they want you to think it's an identity. Color means actually artificial person means a fake, singular lacum, as distinguished from that which is real. So they need promoters to make you think it's real, to take you out of the human family. Now you come under the black codes. This is where your abuses come from legally. Because it's an agreement. Because every man, woman, and child must honor their mothers and fathers. You're no different. I like, I, we like to think we are. But you're really not different. Now, um, this is American Heritage Dictionary. You also must have this. Now, this is make, makes for, for the babies, too. You want um, American Heritage Dictionary on the English language, of the English language. This is one of the standards. Don't start doing them paperback books. Just stop. Don't even go there. You know what I mean? And don't hesitate to stop at uh, flea markets, old books. Don't let the people talk about, you know, them old books that your grandmom had. Throw them out because we're going to get the new ones. No, don't throw them out. It's where the knowledge is. Do you understand? You want at least 13 dictionaries in your library, minimally. Of course, you could have more, but minimally. So you want etymology on the English language, Oxford's dictionary. All scholars have Oxford's. Are we clear? And you got to remember that all your major um, institutions and universities in, Europe's, in Europe were actually built by Moors. This is why all of your rulers in secret are Masons and wear a Moorish fez while pretending not knowing who the Moors are. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? And all your Christian ministers, 99% of them are 32 and 33 degree Masons, got a Moorish fez. And in secret in their rituals, they, uh, how they say, what is Jesus' favorite statement? How did Jesus greet the people? He spoke Aramaic. He says, Assalamu alaikum. That means peace be unto you. But then if they told him that, they got to tell him the rest of history and why one of the first lessons they get in all secret societies is Ruth the Moabitess, his great great grandmother. Because Moabite is the ancient name for the Moors, who are the people today, got hair like lambs, wool, skin like burners, brass, that think human beings are crayons, unfortunately. <laughs> uh, so we have this kind of problem with. Uh, our people not knowing who they are. And it's fine on one level from an intellectual pr perspective. Problem is, is that they're not aware of the legal ramifications. Now, who in this room, particularly, preferably a woman, because women have better energy. Not that, not that we, we got it going on, but, you know, but I, don't, don't, don't throw shoes at me. Anyway, uh, any sisters who don't know that you're more? Y'all know you Moors. That is kind of hard to get somebody to work with this stuff now. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> preferably, uh, and then let's so take a child. Uh, sis, can you come up for me, please? Look, you notice that look? Who, me? You talking to me? <laughs> yes, sis, please. And bring, a child, bring the child with you. Um, now, this is uh, just an American Heritage Dictionary. But I want to show you, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to reconnect you. When I say reconnect, because we're talking political, real estate, real property, estate law, and preserving your wealth, as well as reclaiming your estate, right? Now, you know, what's your name? Alex. Say it here, dude. Alex. Say, give, us a, give us the mic, because we're going to make sure this brother is on, on. Give us the mic. Alex, come on. You want to introduce him, mom? Hmm? Charnel. Charnel? Charnel. Charnel? All right. Get in the mic. Now, I want to show you all how simple this stuff is before we get into the law and reconnect you, right? Because we want everybody to leave here tonight with something that you can work with politically. If you have any issues in courts or if the IRS is trying to take, steal your estates, the information I'm going to give you, at least it'll give you something to work with that. And then you can work with some more stuff later on. But let's ground you. Let's get you 
with something you can work with, all right? Because the deal of it is, what they steal from you, if you can put it back to your family, you can start building your economics, because that's where they're robbing us, all right? So, now let's talk about this, get in the mic. You're very young, however, you are like more or less my age, it's common for us to hear this phrase, don't worry about their children, they will never compete because they can't read. And those who can, won't. Do you know why they say that? Because we don't read. <laughs> and, and, and not because we can't read, is because we've been trained under the Inquisition operations to shun literature because all Asiatic Africans by culture had a library in their house like you have a kitchen. That culture, the Europeans successfully killed it. And this is where the Europeans were burning books for over 300 years under the Spanish Inquisition to kill Moorish culture. This is why they created the brand system of Negro, Black, Colored, Indian, ETC, and then put overseers amongst us to keep pushing that paradigm to remove us from the inherited estate. Because without the honor of your mothers and fathers, you have no inheritance. Now, we're going to take an ordinary dictionary because we already know that a lot of scholars will sit up and say, act like this is a belief system, right? <laughs> they don't fear us because they know that most of the time when people present us with information, we don't challenge it, we don't read, and we don't know how to deal with the etymon. Do you know what the etymon is? No. All right, how many people know what the etymon is? Not enough. Not in this house. In this house, y'all supposed to know. Etiman. Etiman, the Etiman. Raise your hands. I don't, I don't, not. Do, do one of the things. All right, now listen. The Etiman is to words, language across the planet what Adam is to everything that is built. Are we clear? Oh, that's so sweetie. Don't that just make you feel good? Anyway, come on up here, sis. Yes. Yes. Anyway, what now, myself and these babies, right, come from that onk. What do, when you see that onk, that onk, that onk, also referred to as a cistrum, is the uterus, fallopian tubes, birth canal, the holy cross, stargate. No one gets here but through her. This is why all ancient deities are female, because it's just the truth. It has nothing to do with what everybody makes up later for some political game. But anyway, babies, this is the Edimon principle. Like you can take, um, and because we're dealing with the egg or the ovum of words, that's the seed of a word, is the etiman. All right, the etiman is the seed, ovum, egg of a word, all right? It is used across language around the world by all scholars except those who are paid off. Will not reveal it to their believer degrees. I mean, believers don't get this information, just adepts. Adepts, whether you're dealing with skull and bones, Knights Templars, Knights of Columbus, uh, Eastern Stars, Daughters of Isis, Kyklos, Ku Klux Klan, Union Guard, White Camellia, uh, Skull and Bones, anyone in your mystic degrees, all, all of them, don't get it twisted, just because they're in Islam or Christianity or Judaism, they're all Kabbalists, are we clear? Yeah. And all of them know what that Kaaba is in Mecca, all of them do. And we ain't talking about the evils that people do in the name of religion, we're talking about the science that is the true cosmology, Kabbalistic, yoga philosophies that comprises religion across the planet. Are we clear? That's where, that's where your imams, your rabbis, your ministers, your sheiks, your grand sheiks, your skull and bones members, ETC, all of them are Kabbalists, are we clear? All of them are adepts, are we clear? Because they're dirty, 
and very few of them are clean, they've created these things that you know as sects. S-E-C-T-S. -E and those are those little package games they made to divide people against each other in the name of religion when the masses don't get religion. Are we clear? Yes. I'll give you another key, and I challenge you to challenge it. Spirit and spirituality means breath and the art of breathing and nothing else. And all priests know that. Spirit and spirituality is breath, the art of breath, learning to breathe to prepare yourselves to receive the electrical charges from the Akashic records that exist in nature that connects you to the higher mind, which is religion. Are we clear? Yes. Now, I'm telling you that to keep this stuff simple so that you can challenge it, because I know it make people get upset because they think you're attacking their beliefs. <laughs> beliefs are for children, otters, and animals and imbeciles. <laughs> Faith are when they grow up a little bit more. And fruition is the degree that you're supposed to be on, but most of you never heard of it because the priesthood don't give it to you. So I'm just telling you so that you understand what them three candlesticks represent around the square altar in ancient Hikupta that you call Egypt, that is preserved all over the world. Belief, faith, fruition. It's reflection neophyte, scholar, and master. And all of your priesthood got the third light or the third rock from the sun, your pyramid, which is the triune Allah or all universal law. Are we, are we clear? And it comes through woman herself. Are we clear? But anyway, so just cut through that so that you will understand uh, some, some questions that you might have that we don't need to answer, you'll answer them yourself later about one o'clock tonight when you're resting. So I gave you keys. Now, this is what we're gonna do, baby. This is what, this is what now matrix means womb. Are we clear? When you go into language across the planet, all scholars, all priests are trained in etymology and are taught the rule of the etymon. All PhDs have it. All Europeans in their pristine schools get it, but you don't get it in your schools. Now, when you go into Moorish Science Temple of America and go in the Adab chamber, you get the Adab, Adab, Adab degree. You get Adab this degree. Are we clear? Yes. Drawley set it up for this information to be taken to the four corners of the world to all nations. Unfortunately, J. Edgar Hoover, and Calvin Coolidge saw different and infiltrated. This is why we have difficulties setting up schools which should be in every temple. So when you have a more science temple, do the best that you can to support your temple in your area because those are regencies. You must protect them even though some of them may not be run right because you're going to need them. I'm telling you. Thank you. You're going to need them, all right? But what we want to do is show you how easy it is to educate people by teaching them the etymon degree that all the priests have, all right? See, so when you get the etymon degree, you're not a follower anymore. You know why? Because at that time, you're able to take your hand and lay it in Allah's hand and remove the middleman. That's why a lot of people don't like Drew Ali. Why? Because when you really, really, really begin to study what he laid out, the priesthood is being dissolved because they've been dirty. And when people start recognizing they get in the power, they're in the position of power, and they start really, really seeing what he set up, they start betraying. Mm -hmm. But they keep the seat. Mm -hmm. They keep the seat, but they protect, be, betray the cause and try to act like Drew Ali didn't teach national constitution law, which is necessary for you to regain your lost estate. All right. Now, let me, let me show you something. So, these are children, and I'm going to show them the basic Adam degree, and you being a woman and a mother and governor by nature, you make sure I don't tell them something wrong. That's your job, all right? And then you either verify, clean up, or do what is necessary. But I want to show the babies, 
And then they'll, they'll be able to teach other children because they're not going to get this in school. This is only given to European children or people who are rulers. There's not given to people who are followers. And, and understand, don't think it's just the Europeans. All your Negro leader, marcher leader guys got this stuff too. Because 90% of them are 32 degree Masons. So don't let them fool you just because they don't tell you. It's the devil. Yeah, they keep you away from it. Do you understand? Now, this is what occurs. So basically, with children, you can take like um, an egg carton, cut four pieces off, and then you put eight parts of speech in each basket, and you start the children on power numbers, three, fives, and seven, according to the age, like when they're maybe two and three. Two and three, you give them basic words. And, and you give them the dictionaries, and you always have clean water around, you know, do the libation and everything, uh, clean water, and you train them properly. And you always have good light, ETC, Make sure there's no stress. And you never begin to study without dictionaries on your desk adjacent to whatever other discipline you have. So there's no scholar that sits down with one book. Are we clear? Yeah. What I just say, Mama? <laughs> when you're studying, you never sit down with one book. Say if I have a book on um, geometry. So I got a book on geometry, the subject matter for the moment, right? You got to have an etymology dictionary there. You got to have a Latin to English dictionary, Hebrew to Latin dictionary, and a heritage dictionary all together, available, not going to the shelf to get it. It's supposed to be on your desk. That's standard. Are we clear? Are we clear? Yeah. So if you, if you build that in your babies now, by the time they get to college, they'll be bored to death because they'll already recognize that these people ain't teaching them nothing. <laughs> because this is third grade degree that I'm giving them right now. So keep this in mind. I'm giving them third grade edamon. Third grade. All right. So the first thing is done. When, you, when you're looking up a word, so look up black as an example. Now you know, hold these together. Hold the book together. Now you know that both Europeans and Asiatics have been training our people that they're black people. And they insist on saying that, right? Now, I'm going to give you proof of why Europeans laugh all the way to the bank, say, don't worry about them because they can't read. And they know the overseers are doing the rest of the work for them. So look up the word black. And I'm going to show you a rule, the Etamon rule. I'm going to let them go through a little experiment that I always do, this is the, because it becomes yours. You know, like if you tell somebody something, oh, that's interesting, but you know, that brother said this. But if you show them and let them go through it, it becomes their own. That's how they're supposed to be taught. They're, they're not supposed to be followers. They're supposed to be taught. They're supposed to be able to come back to the teacher and deliver something on their own merit. Are we clear? True education is based on merit. Not followership. All right, you found, found it? Now, I'm going to show you how they're trained in school. It's almost automatic. It's almost given. Now, I want you to read the definition. And, and mother, follow them and guide them. Read the definition. Now, watch this, you all. Go ahead. Go being, into the mic. Go ahead into the mic. Being, being of dark skin. What does it say? Speak clearly, because they've got to hear you in the back. Get in the mic. Get in the mic, because I got to hear you. Get in the mic. Um, being of dark skin. Now, is. stop. Now, it's one time. I want you all to pay attention to this. Pay attention to this, all right, baby? All right, take notes. Girlfriend was taking notes earlier. <laughs> See you on, boy. All right, do it again. That's one, right? Being, do it again. Being of darkest. Uh, arch, uh, arch, all right, um, stop. Do it again. Go ahead. Being of darkest, darkest audit. Now, I want you to pay attention to this too, right? Because this is very important. And this is one of the reasons why the Europeans have fun referring to adult Asiatics that are called black as boys and girls, because they don't know the rules. So let's talk the rules, right, y'all? All right. Now, look at this, baby. Read that again. And I want you to pay attention to what I'm going to point out to you. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. And I let them do it three times, and you pay attention to this, all right? 
being of darkest. Uh... Now, I'm going to show you something. You see this? You see this, Mother? Mm -hmm. You see that right there? Right there, it's in italics, right after the word, isn't it? Right. Why is it in italics? Because it's emphasizing, isn't it? And what does that italics point to? So a scholar immediately knows that black, when applied to pe natural people, is a brand without even going into the entry that quickly. That's the difference between a scholar and the students. That's what makes the imam the imam and makes the others the bill-paying believers. That's what makes the PhD the professor and the others paying them on ridiculous over and over again sessions or stuff they could learn overnight if they were taught the rules. So if you teach the rules, they can't justify all these years and years and years in these semesters. Do you understand? Now I want you to see that because I want you to give support and I want you to also uh, consider when you're studying. Now, when they're using language, they deal what is called morphology, transfer ETC. Um, and then you deal, when you're dealing with engineering, social engineering, they, they would use compound words, ETC, stuff like that. So what is a compound word, baby? What's a compound word? Um, the word to put together. Oh, go ahead, girl. Oh, I'm serious. Let me get myself together. Whew. All right, girl. We got this. So now, as you can see, when you follow down and you see the compound word, what's that compound word right there, biggest day? Me? Biggest day. What's that compound word? Right here? Yes. Oh, black or a more? Why are you saying it with a question mark? <laughs> black a more. Now, what's the part of speech? Any dark. Noun. The noun, oh. the matrix. Noun. So now it separates the adjective from the noun. You see that? See, black or more, any dark-skinned person, especially an African Negro, earlier black, small case, then more, and see how the black is all case, which means a straw, and is separated from more, which is a capital letter. There's the identification of these people who think they're black, right in the dictionary. See that? Mm -hmm. Spell it. M-O-O-R. All right. See how simple it is to educate children? So welcome to class, Moors. All right? Are we clear? Yes. It's in the dictionary, isn't it? It doesn't even take a scholar, does it? It just takes somebody to read it, doesn't it? Uh -huh. Thank you very much. Give them a hand, y'all. <laughs> so now we're going to talk about your lost estate. All right? And it's best to use the children because it can't be disputed. Then we bring an adult to show the methodology so as a mother, because women are protective anyway, and she can see for herself. But then imagine all of us going through that same little third grade grammar lesson and recognize how you've been miseducated, not just by Europeans, but by your own. 
These people know that you're not black. They don't doubt it. They know that you're not black. And they know that you're Moors. That's why they had the Mummers Parade in Philadelphia where they took your birthright. Mum's the word. And that's why they used to do it in blackface until the Good administration because Good was conscious and he stopped it. Do you understand? Yeah, see, no, but yeah, yeah, Cecil B. Moore, yeah. But I want to read a little bit from Statement of Noble Drawley, then we're going to go into a few things. I'm going to ask you what you see, and then I'm going to show you again your connection to this estate so that the information that you're given makes sense to you. I don't want to talk to you and go like this, all right? I want to talk to you and go like this so you can use the information. We're not here to sound good, we're here to free people. This is the age of liberation, are we clear? Not talking it, we wanna do it, all right? But whosoever will let them come, whosoever will let them hear. So let's give you some facts to back up what we demonstrate through the babies, all right? So we want them to grow up not dealing with this paradigm of this ridiculousness of thinking that human beings are crayons that we have in difficulty to purge these adults from which steals their birthright, and then they give their birthright to the European and then get mad at him because he acts like the sovereign. Do you understand what I'm saying? Don't get mad at him. Mm, not altogether. But he's not totally guilty. We keep giving him the sovereign power, then complaining because he acts like a sovereign. So um, I want to go into the divine warning by the prophet. Um, now I'm going to go into about the fifth paragraph. Um, now the wealth of all national governments, gold and silver and commerce belong to the citizens alone and without your national citizenship, by name and principles, you have no true wealth. And I'm hereby calling on all true citizens that stand for a national free government and the enforcement of the Constitution to help me in my mission, great missionary work because I need all support from all true American citizens of the United States of America. Help me to, to save my people who have fallen from the constitutional laws of government. I am depending on your support to get them back to the constitutional fold again that they may, will learn to love instead of hate and will live according to love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice, supporting our free national constitution of the United States of America. Now, the reason I read that because we also have COINTELPRO operatives that, that, that were infiltrated into this movement to take positions of authority of governorship to tell the people that this Moorish Divine National Movement has no civic relationship whatsoever. That statement right there is the highest level of civics on the planet because that's the government rule of nations and is used by nations around the world as a pattern for order and civic. Civics is the science that treats of government and the duties, the capacities of the citizenry, as well as the limited authority of government, and your job is to keep them in check. Don't think so? Look at chapter 29 in your Circle 7 Koran, when it talks about the sovereign power that is given to the, the brothers wearing the purple robes, playing fake like they ain't supposed to be teaching you government. But I, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna show you something, then I want to, um, I wanna show you something, then I want to, um, See what you know, and then we're going to talk. Now, keep in mind, any questions you ask, write them down, and don't hesitate because I got alligator skin. You understand? Because it ain't, it ain't about ducking. It's about fixing things. And when you begin to ask questions, that tells us where the sickness is. And if we've been given the cure, you can't give the light if you don't have the light. But if we give you the light, you have it to share with others. So when the Europeans start coming after your properties or trying to tax you out of your properties, you're supposed to have the knowledge by which to counter that magi who's been calling himself a magistrate. And you're supposed to know that he's a magi. And you got a fez. And you're supposed to know he got one in secret too. And he's living off of you. They're living off your virtues. You need to be able to start preserving your estate. Are we clear? Uh, let me find something here. Um, and um, and I want to see what you're familiar with. 
Now, the brothers in New York, the brothers in New York, um, a few years ago, used my book, Moors and Mexicans, because they was doing a TV show, and the Europeans were up there talking trash, talking about that our family is immigrants coming up here taking American jobs and everything. Europeans. <laughs> talking about our family from the South. Well, this is what they had to say. Well, if you think I'm illegal because I'm a Mexican, learn the true history because I'm in my homeland. How about that? Because that's, that's how you need to think. Because we're the Americans, not the Europeans. American is Al Moroccan. Al, descendant down from Moroccan. American is Al Moroccan. American. That's your flag. Now, you see this? When um, Hillary Clinton spoke from the Ben Franklin room, you know why she spoke from the Ben Franklin room? Anybody got any idea? That's after they bombed Benghazi. Why is she got them three Moorish flags behind her in Ben Franklin room when they do not speak publicly from the Ben Franklin room? Because they're appealing to the rest of the world trying to imply that they're not maintaining servitude here, and they absolutely are. Because they ain't told these people that they're Moors. But she's appealing to the rest of the world. Why? Because Ben Franklin was a minister plenipotentiary under Muhammad, Sultan of Morocco, when the treaty was set up and the ordinance of 1787 before the adoption of the Constitution for setting up this government, which is not under what? Christian law. It is Muslim law. Islam. Now, this is why Obama went to Hikupta, which is Egypt, which you call Egypt, but it ain't Egypt. It's Hikupta. And his wife triangulated, went to the Alhambra, the last stronghold of the Moors, before the Pontifex took place and the Christians overthrew the world. Don't think religion, think Pope of Rome. It ain't got nothing to do with Jesus. Jesus was Yahudi, or what you call Jew. So don't get it twisted. They've been lying on him comfortably, and nobody challenges them. So let me give you some factual information to retie you to your estate so this information makes sense to you. Also, I want you to see this, right, this one right here. This are, these are Moors in the kingdom on the other side of Morocco, holding up a picture of Noble Ali. That's on the other side, at the kingdom. Now, I'm going to go into the treaty book, go into the treaty book and um, show you some stuff. I think first I want to show you, hold on, cover, covers, all right. Um, I'll go in another section and see if I can find it. I got so much stuff, I try to, I just try to put some limited stuff here on here, and I still, because I got tons of stuff that I, that I use but I haven't published, and that is the counter to the tell pro operators amongst us. That's why, one of the reasons why over the years I put the, the, um, the lesson books out, out of sequence. And this is so as the um, COINTELPRO operatives counter us that we put information out later that actually puts a nail in their coffin. That's why a lot of them, them governors don't like Taji guy, because I don't play with them. Jawali told us take this information to the four corners of the world, to all nations. And on our minister's papers, it says the hedges and the highways, not club. This is the birthright of the people. And it's what we taken to them. But people are afraid that when you get this information that you'll outgrow them real quickly and they want seat warmers. So what happens is 
when you start educating people, they have to actually start producing something because you're not going to follow somebody that can't produce nothing, that's going to play emotional games. Just wait. One of these days, you're going to have an egg sandwich. Just keep praying. You know, and all that comes, and they said that's to your grandma. You know, and you, I'm still waiting for the egg sandwich to eat. I don't like eggs. You know, but come on. And this is pretty much, they've been getting, pretty much getting over on us. Um, now, hold on. Um, mm-hmm. I'll just go into the context. I'll just go into context. Now, I'm going to show you why all of your, your leader guys must be Masons, and I'm going to show you why all your presidents are Masons, etc., and, and why they will start telling you that it's devil worship so that you don't pay attention to it because you'll be getting back to your lost estate. Save your question just a minute, good brother, and I'm, I'm, I'm get with you. I ain't going to forget you. And, make, and give him a mic, too, in a minute. See this December the 1st, 1789? He's been in office about seven months. He was appointed. He was not elected. He was appointed April the 30th of that same year. Keep in mind, this is the same year, 1789, when the Sundry Free Moors Act was before the House of Representatives, which we'll go into too, to connect you. Are we clear? And this is to show you for those naysayers and the COINTELPRO operators that, that try to make these people think that Drew Ali made this stuff up. He's delivering you, bringing you back your name, your nationality, and the knowledge of your lost estate and a consciousness so that you can reclaim it so you can stop this stupid Negro colored suffering that you don't have to be doing. You're suffering because you're in dishonor. Because you have no estate if you dishonor your mothers and your fathers. You cannot transact business in another man's name and then talk about property. It ain't going to happen. You're three-fifths person. You can't do somebody's name and nationality and talk about you've got property or inheritance. I mean, don't get angry. Get smart. I mean, yeah, they really trying to take advantage of you, but you don't have to be dumb. Because the information is out there, even though they've burned books for generations, there's enough information that free anybody that wants to be free. And don't think that scholars don't know this information, but this doesn't feed the black agenda. So they ain't going to reveal it. Do you, do you understand? All right, so let's read this. And I want the children to pay particular attention. And I want you to also recognize why you're not going to find information like this in your school books. Be, why? Because it will liberate you. Because it puts everything back into context. And it starts to show you who's who. George Washington, and for those scholars who would dispute it, there's your reference from Documents of American History. So don't think the scholars don't know this stuff. They just ain't talking. Letter from George Washington to, to Muhammad ibn Abdullah, Sultan of Morocco, City of New York, December the 1st, 1789. And he's wearing his Masonic garb, standing on the floor of a Sar set. Those black and white tiles represent a sar and a set, the upper world, the lower world. Are we clear? All right. And the G stands for geometry. And these, that compass in the square is referred to in the Bible as the carpenter's tools. And Jesus was a carpenter. You understand? Good. All right. All right. Now, anyway. Great and magnanimous friends, since the date of the letter which the late Congress, by their president, first sentence let you know that he wasn't the first president, you see, from his own letter. So you see why information like this is dangerous to be exposed to the common people who have been miseducated, who think Georgie was the first president when he was the ninth? Because if they gave you the other history, it begins to tie you back. And the leader guys don't want you to have that information because they can't play the black game and start marching and praying. And they're asking you for five dollars. <laughs> oh, make it ten. Jesus is half. You know that kind of stuff. Anyway, so I want you to pay attention to this. But I want, when we get into it, 
I want you to look what is obvious to you and so that we can get down to some of the politics. And don't forget your question, brother. I ain't forget you. All right? Since the date of the letter which the late Congress by their president addressed your imperial majesty, the United States of America have thought proper to change their government and institute a new one agreeable to the Constitution of which I have the honor herewith to enclose a copy. So you can understand the Constitution didn't come from them, did it? It was adopted by them. Now you understand what Obama was saying when he tell you that the American Constitution come from Muslim law? I'm going to go on to Article 11 of the Treaty of Tripoli from the Treaty of Peace and Friendship that Obama read to the world and show you what he was reading and show you how it went over people's heads. And he's telling you. The time necessarily employed in the arduous task and the disarrangements occasioned by so great though peaceable a revolution will apologize and account for your majesty's not having received those regularly advised marks of attention from the United States, which the friendship and magnanimity of your conduct toward them afforded reason to expect. The United States having unanimously appointed me to supreme executive authority in this nation, you see he was appointed. Now later on you're gonna find out why. Your majesty's letter of August 17, 1788, so this is two years before he was appointed, he's talking about correspondences that were going on. How come you ain't getting this in school? Because they don't want you to know that you're standing on Morocco. That the land is Morocco, the occupational government is the United States. Distinguished from the land, it's a foreign religious corporation belonging to the Jesuits. You're under occupation. And you're referred to as the great Masonic secret. And Mason means mother and son. Aset and Horus, or what they call Isis and Horus, or like they say in the church, Jesus and Mary, mother and son, and the study of masonry, ma sonry, that's what masonry is. More is science. Anyway, so the United States having unanimously appointed me the supreme executive authority in this nation, your majesty's letter of August the 17th, 1788, this was two years before the appointment, which by reason of the dissolution of the late government, government already exists, remain unanswered and has been delivered to me. I have also received the letters which your imperial majesty has been so kind as to write in favor of the United States to the Bashars of Tunis and Tripoli, and I present to you the sincere acknowledgments and thanks of the United States for this important mark of your friendship for them. So you see that Marine song, that's the one they told from the from the, shore, from, the, from the halls of Montezuma to the shores of Tripoli, they conquered you. You get the point? All right. Now, we greatly regret the hostile disposition of those regencies, and so you must know that the regencies are the orders or the territorial orders of the Moors from which they have designed your township, your boroughs, your counties, ETC. The Moorish Science Temples of America are actually regencies. They're not only for ministerial work, they're also for national work. And you're supposed to be prepared to take your places amongst the affairs of men via the study of international law enforcement. The rest of the nations have already declared a recognition of you. Why are not you helping in this work? Except that you've been misguided by some people. So we're going to set this stuff straight so that you can comprehend this for yourself. Are we clear? All right, so um, we greatly regret the hostile disposition of those regencies toward this nation who have never injured them is not to be removed on terms of our power to comply with. As you can see, they couldn't keep up with the taxes. Now you're beginning to understand the al Moroccan revolution on another level, the American revolution, the al Moroccan revolution. Got to know, now you understand why when you go to Gettysburg, Pennsylvania, you see all those statues got turbans and fesses on. The Europeans tell them in school, oh, they're Frenchmen. And the Asiatics say, oh, oh, all right. <laughs> and statues got turbans and feathers on. Biggest day. Gettysburg Address. So our people, they can't pay. You know, things are in their face and they like lunch. And anyway, within our territories, there are no mines worth of gold or silver. And this young nation, just recovering from the waste and dissolution, of a long war, 
have not as yet had time to acquire riches by agriculture and commerce. But our soil is bountiful. Pay attention to this, you all. Take notes, take notes, take notes, take notes. Now you want to see why all of your leader guys must be Masons and why they got a Moorish Fez in secret. Now look at this. We have not yet had time to acquire riches by agriculture and commerce, but our soil is bountiful and our people industrious, and we have reason to flatter ourselves that we shall gradually become useful to our friends. Pay attention to this paragraph. The encouragement which your majesty has been pleased generously to give to our commerce with your dominions. Where do you think you're standing? Moorish dominions. See why they don't give you real history? Why they reconstructed the history? Reconstruction? They weren't building buildings, they're reconstructing history. So the encouragement which your majesty has been pleased generously to give to our commerce with your dominions, the punctuality with which you have caused the treaty with us to be observed, and the just and generous measures taken in the case of Captain Proctor make a deep impression on the United States and confirm, pay attention, their respect for and attachment to your imperial majesty. The United States is an appendage of the Moroccan Empire. Now you understand your divine constitution bylaws and draw lease that you're part and parcel of this set government must live your life accordingly? Now you understand why, he, why uh, Obama told you that this constitution comes from Muslim law? And this is not a Christian country? And our people think it's absolutely the opposite with their miseducation and promoted by a lot of their black leaders. We're paid off because they know this information, but this will kill that diaspora, because you was already here. And this ain't India, and we ain't engines. <laughs> anyway, it, it gives me great pleasure to have the opportunity of assuring your majesty that while I remain at the head of this nation, I shall not cease to promote every measure that may conduce to the friendship and harmony which so happily subsists between your empire and them, and shall esteem myself happy in every occasion of convincing your majesty of the high sense which in common with the whole nation I entertain the magnanimity, wisdom, and benevolence of your majesty. May the almighty bless your imperial majesty, our great and magnanimous friend, with his constant guidance and protection, signed George Washington. You'll never see that in no history books because it kills the whole misinformation foundation that he was the first president and that this government was set up by them. No, they were brought into government. The Constitution is their sanction to do business at Morocco. There's that business flag of amity and commerce. Now you understand why you have that Moorish flag and then you have the stars and stripes. It's a banner. It's not the national flag. This is the national flag. It's your history. You're standing on your own land, trying to go to Africa, and you're standing on Africa. <laughs> and the world's laughing all the way to the bank. That's why they keep building jails, because they can't deport you. That's the truth. You know, and, and the, the, the real ugly thing about this stuff is that your, your leader guys know this stuff. That's why Martin, who was a 32 degree Mason, said, said that what, y'all, y'all, what, refugees in your own land. Then he talked about your great seal pyramid, because he's a 33 degree Mason. He says, I've been to the mountaintop. And I've seen the promised land. I might not get there with you. But we as a people will make it to the promised land. He's talking about the concept of the great seal, but you can't talk about the dawn because you're done. That's why they, you know, it's supposed to be for the temple, temple of Solomon, Solomon, although they hit him in his neck. They was aiming for the temple as a Masonic assassination. Yeah, he was assassinated. Yeah, because he was, he was start talking against the Pope's army. You know, with that Vietnam thing, he started talking about the Pope's army. And when they smacked him upside the head with that brick when they was marching across that bridge, he said something really wrong with these people. And he started getting a little bit more radical. And that wasn't good because he was supposed to be an overseer. Because he had an assignment to interject in all of the so-called organizations, particularly like the Panthers, those who were doing positive things, and take the credit. Just like the breakfast stuff, that was with the Panthers, not him. The March on Washington, that was the Pampers, not him. He was interjected. But he got frustrated at a while and started telling the truth. 
because it's 33 degree mason, but you can't give no signals that you're getting ready to break the seal. Step on the Roman seal and you're gone. Do you understand? And same thing with Kennedy. When Kennedy started bringing the gold back act in, um, that gold, they talking about gold and silver that belonged to you, because remember, the Christians came here to steal our gold and silver. That's their whole mission. We keep forgetting real history. That's why they bumped him off. Do you understand what I'm saying? For trying to bring the gold back in. But anyway, so I'm going to go into this, not totally, so you can understand where Georgie come in, right? Now, this is the preamble to the, to the, to the um, uh, treaty. And see, it's 1786, 1787. And so you got to remember this when you're looking at history. The ordinance of 1787 deals with what you call the Northwest Territories, the formation of government, how this government would be styled, ETC, and the considerations that was taken for indigenous people, not Indians, indigenous people. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? Then the adoption of the Constitution of 1788, 1789. Then he was appointed, 1789, because Ben Franklin, who was a minister plenipotentiary, this is where you get potentate in all your secret societies, minister po uh, plenipotentiary, it was, George, it was Benjamin Franklin, John Adams, and uh, um, Thomas Jefferson, under the authority of the sultan of the land, Morocco. So here's the entry, or what you call the preamble, and we don't even have to go through it for you to see your history. But if you don't know that you're Moors, you don't relate. You see the point? That's why they start promoting that Negro, black, and color stuff. As soon as you start agreeing to be somebody that you're not, you lost your claim of heirship to the large estate, which is under the control of the Popes of Rome under the U.S. Corporation Army. You understand? And that's why they created those 10 miles in, in 1871 for the Popes of Rome of Washington, D.C., and then did the shadow government to overthrow the republic. You see? And that's why they had that fake bank holiday in 1931, 2, 2, 3, 29, up to that 33, after they got rid of Drawley in 29. And this is when they set up the democracy order in 33, which I'll show you in congressional records to show you how you're being played and how people who know this information are avoiding this information because you can't deal with emotions. You got to deal with facts. And when you deal with facts, you can either fix stuff or run. Now, if y'all want to fix stuff, I'm going to give you stuff to fix stuff. You ain't got to talk about racism. You're going to start fixing this thing. Because yeah. <laughs> it's black. And then they want my sandwiches. <laughs> Stop that silly stuff. Let's talk about taking them to high court for human trafficking. How about that? How about going after his birdcage in his house? Because remember, and, and the other reason I wanted to show you this, because I wanted to show you that when Asiatics and Europeans pretend that they don't know who the Moors are, you can see the Moors are the foundation of this government. So I'm proving to you that they're full of crap. Both sides. And they're paying taxes to these Romans for their own enslavement. This is why our brothers and sisters from Africa and Asia and other jurisdictions can come here in the North Gate within two years if they stop past the hardware store on the way, get a thick piece of plexiglass glass because they're coming into the zoo. <laughs> well, it's true. Because when you deal with Jekyll and Hyde, you know, because one day we cool. Next day we do this Jekyll and Hyde thing on you. We do it on each other. Because they don't know each other. They don't know themselves. They don't love themselves. Because the Christians have taught them to hate themselves. So anything that's related to Africa or Asia, our people have this kind of like persimmon type thing. <laughs> they do. They get strange. They, they really, really do. Because they're scared of Rome. Because they know, everybody knows that the European is, is the Negro God. You know, so if, if he puts a picture up of uh, uh, Michelangelo's son says Jesusness, that's Jesusness. <laughs> Even though the book say he got hair like lamb's wool, skin like burnished brass. No, that ain't Jesusness. This, 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 this the other one. <laughs> and so he know they they know they're going to the bank. But this is why um, uh, people come. So so you understand the economics. Um, why and how Asiatics come from other jurisdictions, whether the islands or Africa, or keep a line on that side, and they can make economic progress quite quickly. 
because they don't sell their birthright. Do you understand what I'm saying? They have political problems just like we do, but they ain't gonna come in no political jurisdiction talking about their light skin, orange skin, black people. How you like my light skin, black, yellow shirt? And what the? What? You know, you can go, you can go in an Oxford dictionary. And this is, this is another important thing about the etymon uh, and why it's important to teach the children. Um, black is actually Middle English. So the first thing, you, also this is for the children too. Keep this in mind, babies. Keep this in mind, baby, all right? So when you're looking up a word and you see those large letters, so you look at black and you look in that dictionary and it says M-E, your job is to not to go into the linear entry. Your job is to go to Middle English and put a date on it. Do you understand? And then what are you going to be dealing with you all etymologically? How many hundreds? 1,100, 1,500? What are you talking about? I'm going to leave that to you. But the point of it is, when you do that, that all scholars know this. Remember, all priests know these rules because they're taught. That's why they got the priest degree. That's why they're imams. Because remember, they're all Kabbalists. Kaba, la. They know the mathematical measurement of the Ibri Aleph Beth, what you call the alphabet, alpha and omega, how to read, that it has what's a sound value, a numerical value, and a form value, and that's how language is read across the planet, except it's not taught to people who think crayons are people. You know, I got a light-skinned, orange-skinned, black girlfriend, and I bought her a dark-skinned, black leather coat. <laughs> and people will be thinking that stuff is Afrocentric and deep. And they're laughing all the way to the bank. Now, this is your challenge, because you're going to go home to your libraries, because I already know people get emotional. <laughs> you ain't telling me you're Afrocentric, can't tell me that stuff. <laughs> I'm getting upset. You know, start that stuff. So ME, so you're going to you go to your appendix, and you put a date on it. So when you're properly reading, and this is how scholars check other scholars. So I'm just giving you keys that all PhDs have, all right? Because they all, I mean, this, this across the board. So don't think because he's Muslim, so they don't have it. Oh, he's Jew, they don't have it. Oh, he's Christian. They, no, please, they, they're all of them are jokesters. Across the board, do you understand what I'm saying to you? People are born Muslim. You know what Muslim is? A fetus. Ain't got nothing to do with belief. It's a fetus. It is. Muscles, hair, tissues, electrical system created by woman. By the energies of the planet activating her womb, governed by the moon, 13 cycles as the moon dances around the sun, around the earth as the earth dances around the sun, by which time is told by measurement and woman herself is the walking calendar. Please. Anyway, that's religion. So, <laughs> if you look up the word black, first you put, in, you put a time in it, and then you go, you go to M-E, and then you look at Middle English, and that means what? You're dealing with 1100s, 15s in that area? So already the scholar knows that black is not ancient. It doesn't even go past the 1100s. So when they're talking about the ancient black gods of Egypt, scholars know they're lying. But believers don't know better because they got the mentalities of boys and girls. You know, Pharaoh was black. Jesus was black. <laughs> this is what a scholar knows. So you go to the Middle English, right, and you put a date on it. Then it traces to OHG. OHG is Old High German, and it means pale. See why they laugh at these people? It comes from the Paleolithic man, Negro Yavera Arebo, the, the animal used in the experiment that created what you call the caveman or Paleolith. And if you don't believe it, go into Oxford Dictionary, look up hybrid, yep. then go look up troglodyte nigger, and then look up chimpanzee, and it'll give you history. And you ain't a caveman. And you're not Paleolith. Therefore, you're not black. The European is a black man. It means caveman. All right, so let's go a little further. Now, I'm going to show you all stuff. Pay attention to right. Take it. Huh? Oh, thank you. Um, 
Now, you know, um, Philadelphus is where they took your birthright. And um, so we're going to deal with, uh, let me see. This, now when they, when they uh, murdered them brothers and sisters in, in, in Philly and move, they did this non pro tonk even though this was issued before. And this, keep in mind, this is from the General Assembly House of Representatives, and this is so that when your so-called black leaders talk about they don't, they don't know about this information, but they can go back into Egypt, but they don't know about this stuff that's taking place right now. And all your marching Negro leaders that's always raising this money for some Negro trash man's job that's dealing with these so-called lawyers and barristers and everything, and these politicians, and they got this information. How come they ain't putting this information in the community? Let's, let's, let's look at what's obvious, all right? The General Assembly of Pennsylvania, and keep in Pennsylvania, this is where they took the birthright, right? Now also keep in mind, with Resolution 75, this is where the, the House of Representatives recognized your right to your titles that were taken from you, Ali, Eel, and Bay, confirming what Noble Drawley said, also supported by the nations of the earth. And this information was given to civic groups, to churches, et cetera, and all the communities with the instructions that this information be dispensed amongst the people at all costs. If you don't believe it, go look up the rights of indigenous people that Obama signed when he came back from Egypt. If you don't believe, I'm lying to you. The point that I'm making to you, this information is not unknown. What it is, it doesn't fit everybody's agenda. A few pieces of silver, even though they don't handle silver no more because they ain't allowed to handle money. They got fiat because Rome controlling their estate. So let's look at this, you guys. So, and this is, and, and I'm taking you to take notes so you can go research this stuff yourself. So you can see it has nothing to do with what you believe. It has to do with the politics of the planet. All right? And it also shows you that the Moorish Science Temple of America is established to dispense this information, but the information is not owned by them either because it's a birthright. Are we clear? So it's in your interest to support those temples because they are what? Outpost. But don't let them play you either if the administrators aren't doing what they're supposed to do. Are we clear? This means this is yours to do whether or not you ever were told because everybody already knows it. Because you can't fix your economic problems if you're not in your proper person, which we're going to take you to law and show you that too. So anyway, many sons and daughters. Now, this is a little colored. However, enough information is there that's indisputable. All right? So many sons and daughters of that proud and handsome race, which inspired the architecture of northern Africa and carried into Spain the influence of its artistic temperament and have become citizens of this nation. Now, with that sentence, if you understand world history, then you understand the Renaissance that Noble Drawley makes mention of, and you understand Renaissance men and all your Europeans who are Masons today who studied Islam. And we're talking the science. We ain't talking about the ritual. We're talking the science that used the planet. Are we clear? There's a difference. You know, we ain't talking about salami baloney stuff. We're talking real science, life science. Are we clear? There's a distinction. So don't get that twisted, all right? We're talking about what's used universally. You know, beliefs have nothing to do with it. We're talking about science. Are we clear? All right. So many sons and daughters of that proud and handsome race which inspired the architecture of northern Africa and carried into Spain the influence of its artistic temperament have become citizens of this nation. In the city of Philadelphia, there exists a Moorish American society made up of Moors who have found here an end of their quest for a home and of the children of, of those who journeyed here from the plains of Morocco. Look at chapter 47. Chapter 47 in Circle 7 Quran before the great earthquake. And you see the transferring, or us who crossed, the dividing of the hand, land between Ham and Cush. And then you see all the east, the north, uh, 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 um, northeast, southwest um, parts of Africa on that side, and north, central, South America, including the islands, comprises the Moroccan Empire, or the ancient Moabites, the foundation of civilization on planet Earth. 
with the Great Seal Pyramid as the symbol of civilization itself, which is why no one speaks under it, under that note that the Jesuits have on the, that fake dollar that they're dispensing. That's why no one can speak under it, because it belongs to you. You're the sovereign. You've just been overthrown. So this society has done much to bring about a, a thorough absorption of these people, of those principles which are necessary to make them good American citizens. The Moorish Americans have since being here missed the use of the titles and name annexations that were so familiar at home and which are used in accordance with the doctrines of the religious faith to which their adherence therefore be resolved that this house commends the Moorish American Society of Philadelphia for the efficient service it has rendered the nation in bringing about a speedy and thorough Americanization of those, these former Moors. Who do you think former Moors were? People who were Moors before now think they're crayons. That means nationalizing you. Because without your nationalization, you have no right of a state. And I'm showing you that this is, the, these politicians know this information and trying to act like this information is only in the Moore Science Temple of America. But everybody got a zip lip because once they tell you the truth, you ain't got no business being poor no more, y'all. And that makes a lot of people uncomfortable because you're finding out that you are the wealthiest people in the world. Somebody else is controlling your estate. How come nobody wants these people to know they're Moors? I wonder why. <laughs> yeah, right. Anyway, so resolve that the uh, House commends the Moorish American Society of Philadelphia for the efficient service that rendered the nation and bringing about a speedy and thorough Americanization of these former Moors that in accordance with the fullest right of religious independence guaranteed every citizen, we recognize also the right of these people to use the name of fixes, il, ali, or bay, or any other prefix or suffix to which they have heretofore been accustomed to use or which they may here after acquire the right to use. On the question, will the House adopt the resolution that was adopted May the 4th, 1933? That's not new news, is it? Yeah. Now, notice that it's May the 4th, 1933, this was adopted, right? But then March, a couple months before, Franklin Delano Roosevelt did the uh, Gold Act, Trading with the Enemy Act crap, and the fake crash. That's what it was all about, to hide this information. To distract you. You see the point? Now let me show you some more information. All right. Now I'm going to go back to the treaty book and I'm going to show you what Obama was reading, was reading from. Anybody that doubts what I'm saying, go on, go on, um, go on any internet and, 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 and type in what does Obama have to say about the Moors? And then he's going to go right into Tripoli Treaty. And I'm going to go into it for you. And I'm, he goes into the middle, but I'm going to go into a, 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 um, the whole thing to let you see. This is what Obama is going to be reading from. Keep in mind, they break tradition, don't they? Because the president and his wife are always presented together, aren't they? How come she triangulated and went to the Alhambra, the last stronghold of the Moors? Then he goes to Egypt and exposes that the United States Constitution comes from Muslim law. And he goes right into Article 11. Let's look what Article 11 said, that the president for the United States Corporation spoke to the world. As the government of the United States of America is not in any sense founded on the Christian religion. First sentence. See what you don't know about this government? See what your so-called marching leaders have been hiding from you because most of them are paid off to play these 501c3 games with Lyndon Baines Johnson to keep his Negro marching guys in order? That's what that 501c3 agreement is for. Don't rock the boat. So as the government of the United States of America is not in any sense founded on the Christian religion, as it has in itself no character of enmity against the laws, religion, or tranquility of Muslim men, that's where you get Muslim from, 
and the said states never uh, entered in any war or act of hostility against any Mohammedan nation, it is declared by the parties that no pretext arising from religious opinion shall ever produce an interruption of the harmony existing between the two countries. Does not go back in support of George Washington's letter. So now when y'all have issues in front of that court and them magis, them, them, them judges and magistrates who are masons and you walk in there and they playing them Negro acts on you, don't you know that they know that they're violating you? And don't they know that that grand chief of the Moorish Science Temple is supposed to automatically send a mufti down there to remove you out of that jurisdiction? Because you don't belong in that jurisdiction? That's why Eisenhower closed down consular courts in 54 to control his marching Negro leaders, because that's the proper venue. Because consular court is Article 3, Section 2, diversity of citizenship. But they needed you to agree that you was colored, and therefore they needed some Negro guys to convince you were people of color. Well, let me show you what them Negro leaders know. I'm taking you right to law. How many more minutes? All right, I'm going to go into this and then we'll close up. All right. Now, um, I'm going to go to Henry Campbell Black's Law Dictionary. Um, and all of them, all your politicians and all your leader guys got this information because remember, anybody that got degrees must know language and must know how to trace language. And they must know the basic geometry operations of government because they're taught it. That's what makes them imams. That's what makes them rabbis. That's what makes them grand sheiks. You understand? So don't think because they're from different clubs that they got different information because truth don't change or pass away. In secret, they're all Kabbalists. In open, they make all these little different versions so they can have different parts of the club take care of them. And Susie, with Jesus' half. All right, so we're gonna go, I'm gonna do two, 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 two things. I'm gonna go to you all and show you what happens when you call that European white man that you're giving him your sovereign power that belongs to you? And when he acts like it, don't get mad. <laughs> because you're an heir, and you have a right to sign them. You keep on signing somebody your position because you don't know that you're white. That's on you. What? Oh, well, that's true. Oh, I heard somebody, what? <laughs> yeah, the peanut butter sandwiches. <laughs> Here. This is law. <clears throat> <laughs> now, keep in mind, Knights of Columbus Ku Klux Klan oath, um, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, Chicago, Illinois, 1854 to 1863, um, Horace Greeley in competition with Lincoln, um, Go West Young Man, that's the ritual with the um, Mummers Parade that they're using, and um, the Wig of Moor party, Wig of Moor, they put on wigs that look like Moors. That's why they use it just like they do in England right now. The, the barristers are wear wigs to imitate the Moors. That's why they call the Whig of Moor Party. Then that became the Republican Party. Then that became the White Party. This is when the European took on the title white that belonged to you. It's a status, not a complexion. Now, this is what it's assumed to mean since the Knights of Columbus Ku Klux Klan, 1854 to, to, to 63, Philadelphia, Chicago, and then the Naturalization Act of 1870, when it started to be used by them calling themselves white. But this is what it really means in law, including supported law case. Are we clear? So let's go through this. Free white persons, quote unquote, is a legal phrase referred in the Naturalization Act. So now you're supposed to know sociology, you're supposed to know Nationalization Act and Naturalization, they're distinct. Naturalization is for aliens. Are we clear? Now, as amended July the 14th, uh, 1870, which meaning naturally given to it when first used in one statute 103C3, meaning all persons belong to the European races, then commonly counted as white, and their descendants, including such descendants in other countries to which they have immigrated. And understand in law books you have condensation, so you, you take what you call your conjunctions and stuff like that, and then you reinterject them, the preps, et cetera, because it's condensed. So it here is free white persons. You see this? So it, free white persons, 
includes all European Jews more or less intermixed. If they're not mixed, they can't be free white people. I mean, if they ain't got melanin in them, can't be free white people. It's a legal status. It includes all free, uh, Jew, uh, European Jews more or less intermixed with peoples of Celtic, Scandinavian, Teutonic, Iberian, Latin, Greek, and Slavic descent. Free white persons includes Magyars, Lops, and Finns, and the Bosque and Albanians. Free white persons includes the mixed Latin, Celtic, Iberian, and Moorish inhabitants of Spain and Portugal, the mixed Greek, Latin, and Phoenicians, and North African inhabitants of Sicily. North Africans are white people. Do you understand? Phoenicians are white people. Moors are white people. It's a legal status. So, all right, so Iberian and Moorish inhabitants of Spain and Portugal, the mixed Greek and Latin, Phoenician and North African inhabitants of Sicily, and the mixed Slav and Tartar inhabitants of South Russia. Free white persons does not mean Caucasian race. Can y'all repeat this, please? How, who can read? Who can read? Who can read? Can you read? All right, let's, let's do this together, y'all. It means free white persons. Free white persons, come on, y'all does not mean Caucasian race. Free white persons does not mean Aryan race. Free white persons does not mean Indo-European races, nor the mixed Indo-European Dravidian, Semitic, and Mongolian peoples who inhabit Persia. A Syrian of Asiatic birth and descent will not be entitled to become a naturalized citizen of the United States as being a free white person's then you got all your law case so you can see clearly it's a legal status. So what happens when you call that European white man? You just called him sovereign and transferred your estate to him as fofer. Now, as soon as he acts like it, you want to talk about he's racist. <laughs> see the danger of not being educated? And then you get angry because you just don't know. So the people are destroyed by the day for a lack of knowledge. Man, know thyself. Wow. One more thing, then we gonna lose. I got, I got, I got to do this because we got, we got, we got, we got to, we got to, huh? We're taking a break, y'all. But I got to show you all stuff because I got to show you what everybody knows about you, including your, including them guys that keep on them, them co and tell pro operators that that's on this campaign or trying to smear us. So I'm proving you that they all have this information. I'm proving you that they all know. I'm proving you're tied to this government, to this land. So when you see them attacking Moors, you better defend yourself because they're attacking your estate. Because they don't want you to wake up. Why? Because all them bonds around the world, them countries are going to drop them because they're worthless paper. Because they're all based on your estate. All of those bonds, those U.S. Treasury bonds around the world, are based on the Moorish estate. And now that you're waking up, they're dead paper. So bankers are committing suicide? I think somebody's helping them. Like the Dragon family may be from China or something. I, you know, they called me from England uh, last year. You know, cause I, I talk to people from around the world. You know, uh, when you're a national, people from other countries talk to you. They won't talk to Negroes. <laughs> no, I'm no, no, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not saying that to, to, as a negative because they can't be trusted because they know that anybody that'll betray their own blood will betray them. Because our people, they'd be out of job two months. Do you got a country where you can go to kill the women and children because they're not Christians? <laughs> because I need a job and they go in the military and start murdering their own brothers and sisters around the world, come back and start some Negro marching group with their Negro Mason leader guys who act like they don't know what's up. And we didn't get no black badges from Troop 54. So we're going to raise some money. Yeah, right. Everybody knows Negroes can't be trusted. Nobody likes black people because they're traitors. They don't know that's how the world views them. They think that the world just don't like their color. Uh, it ain't exactly what they think. But a national, they'll talk because they know you know the history. And they know if you have the courage in the face of this opposition to speak openly, and Rome didn't kill you yet, they know that basically you have some sense of credibility. Not a guarantee, but some sense of credibility. 
But they know that most of our people, they'll sell their babies out in a minute as soon as they're out of job two weeks. They will. And then blame the devil. The devil's a scapegoat. Because they don't have the courage to, to face this Roman for what he does to them every day. Now, color and appearance, a semblance or similar lacrum as distinguished from that which is real. A prima facie or apparent right, hence a deceptive appearance, a plausible assumed exterior concealing a lack of reality. Now, you see what they're saying when they say you're people of color? Now I'm going to show you colored. I'm going to show you colored. All right? And then we're going to take a break, you all. Now, I'm going to show you it's a legal term. And, our, and they've been training you to think it's Afrocentricity. It's a legal phrase. Babies, with the babies, take notes. Babies, take notes. Because we don't want them to grow up with these brands. Because remember, these brands, there's codes that come with these brands. When they agree to these things, there's codes that come with them. So if you agree to be colored, there's codes that go with this stuff. Colored by common usage in America. So the first sentence let you know is used sociologically. Are we clear? This term is a term, not an identity. Are we clear? In such phrases as quote unquote, so that's emphasized, isn't it? Colored persons, quote unquote, the colored race, quote unquote, colored men and the like is used to designate Negroes a person of African race, including all persons of mixed blood descended from Negro ancestry, and it gives you law case. Now pay attention to this, very important. But where a state constitution provided for separate schools for the white and colored races, the term quote unquote white race was held to be limited to the Caucasian race and the term quote unquote colored races to embrace all other races, then it gives you law case. It has also been held, pay attention to this, y'all, that there is no legal, technical signification to the phrase, quote unquote, colored persons, which the courts are bound judicially to know. They don't even have to recognize you because it's a brand. Now that's law. Now you see why you must have dictionaries, y'all, why you must be re-educated? Because the world knows what these terms mean, and you've been played by your marching leader guys who have this information, too, but they can't do the black thing, and they can't raise black funds and take your lunch money. Yeah. <laughs> they got a gun with some cures. So you see why the European took on the title white? Because it belonged to you. He traded places. Now let's take a break, y'all. All right. But um. I want to again welcome everybody back. We actually got to get out the building at 9.30 so we cannot linger around. This is why we must have our own buildings. So we, because we do this all day long. I'm not going to lie. Because you can see Todd's kept going. When we had our classes, we would not leave that house until the next day. Matter of fact, two days after that. I'm dead serious. I am dead serious. But this is not actually ours. It is, but it's not. And everybody have to be out here by 9.30. So we're going to open up with some Q&A, but we have some um, announcements coming. But before we get started, I wanted to real quick say about this book again. How many people are familiar with um, Tariq or the Rock of Gibraltar? Everybody should know about that. How many people know about Jay-Z? Who knows Jay-Z? <laughs> Let me tell you something real quick before we bring Brother Mario up. How many people? Mario. My bad, bro. Don't shoot me. I don't shoot me, bro. I'm just the messenger. Oh, and before I forget, because everybody's asking about my shirt, this shirt is actually done by um, Blue Red Pill, actually. How many people know Red Pill? Fillmore. So if you want it, go to his page, Fillmore, on Facebook. You can get this shirt. He just gave it to me when I went back home to New York. But um, you can pick the shirt up on there. Um, why I said this, because I was reading this book, and it was talking about the Rock of Gibraltar. And Jay-Z had a skit or a piece in Diamonds Are Forever. How many people remember that? Yeah. All right, I'm going to show you something, how hip-hop deals with our history. 
Jay-Z said, how could you fault to when you're the rock of Gibraltar? I had to get off the boat to walk on water. Well, that was Jay's piece in that song. The rock of Gibraltar, when you left North Africa, crossed over the rock, which we look at now called the Prudential Sign, the insurance company, into, Andal into Andalus, Spain. He crossed over on the horse called a stallion. Rocky is called the Italian stallion. It's a horse on a Ferrari and a Porsche, which is black. Yeah. It's your history again. Yep. See, they're telling you. But Jay was trying to tell people that. He was trying to say, how could you falter when you're the rock? What's the slogan for Prudential? Solid as a rock. Yep. That's their slogan. They're telling you all the way around. But that's a little bit of hip-hop history. Yeah. We'll do that here one day. There you go. There you go. Do, don't take our word for it. Look it up. Google it. It's Google Bowl. <laughs> but let's bring my brother up here because we have a couple announcements. We got to get out of here. We're going to open up for some Q&A. It's been real, y'all. Right on. This is not the last time um, we're bringing my brother back. Um, we got other people we're bringing in. I'm working on trying to get Ramona Africa. I'm going to talk with um, Karen, brother Abdullah Bey, our etymologist which is no joke, so we're working on that right now. So we got a lot of people lined up. So every two to three months, with y'all support, we, we bring these people out because we pay everyone. If someone pays me to come speak, we pay our people to come speak also, and that's how we work, okay? And we rent the places, so this is what we do. But with no further ado, I'm going to bring my brother up here. Give the brother a round of applause. That's long. That's long, good brother. Peace. Hotel. Hotel. Hotel family. I'm Brother Myro. I'm one of the board of directors here at Karas Unity Center, and we... We uh, welcome you again, like Reverend Mary Kyra at the beginning, and, uh, and invite you to, you, as you can see, we have a beautiful space here. The space is for learning, the space is for growth, the space is for spiritual growth, and uh, I always want to come up here and continue to have you plug yourselves in because we own this place, mm -hmm. at least to the extent that we know. Yeah. Well, we're <laughs> and we're going to continue to, yeah, continue to learn how we can take that. Too. So they can't take it away from us. But as long as you're yeah. supporting us and other institutions like this, then, then our family is going to find ourselves in a peaceful place and we're going to grow and, right and reestablish exactly where we need to right be. Right on. Yes. So, so envision that because one of the things we practice here is that science, that metaphysical science of thoughts held in mind produce after their kind. All right. All right. So we know that most of y'all gave a uh, donation already of $20, and we appreciate that. Maybe a few came in that didn't. We wanted to give you an opportunity in case you realize the importance of, a, of having a space where we can bring a brother all the way from the East Coast, mm -hmm. all the way to here, and, and be your, your, your safe space where you can sit and learn. Projector, we have an excellent system here. We record. We do all kinds of things things here, even, even having uh, a uh, online radio show where if you have something, some independent organization that you want to do, you can actually contact our offices and you can set up where we have a little studio for people to do their own broadcast on Blog Talk Radio so, and Ustream as well. So we have a lot of functions and that's why we call it a center. It, it's, there are spokes to the center. And so you all are those different spokes, bringing, bringing the information, bringing the knowledge, bringing the ways that we can help one another. So we want to just give you opportunity. We wanted to just pass the bag, the offering uh, bags for anybody that didn't get a chance to give us an offering, didn't get a chance, or, or just so excited by the, the information that you're getting today that you just want to step it up and give a little bit more so that we can continue to bring people out and never have to want or beg or plead for our people to support their people, your family. All right? So we're, we're passing it right now. But I'd like for you just to repeat after me, divine love through me. Blesses and multiplies, blisses and multiplies. All that I am, all that I have all that I give and all that I receive. I give freely and I receive abundantly. Ashe, thank you very much. Thank you. We have, we have an upcoming, uh, just a couple of, maybe two or three 
other announcements. We have an upcoming uh, honoring of the 43rd solar return of Tupac Shakur on June the 14th at 5.30 p.m. We, we, this is about our third year doing that video. We go kind of into what Tupac was about by some of the brothers and sisters that really know a lot more about his history uh, before his death. And uh, we have uh, business mixers here. We have um, a celebration coming up on June 29th, celebrating the 73rd solar return of Kwame Torre. We've got, uh, we have a sister here on Tuesdays. Uh, we call it Harambe Housing. She's a qualified housing expert. She basically has educated herself on, to the best of her ability on how she can help you to avoid these foreclosures, to avoid, to find uh, better housing situations. She's very, very good at that. That's Sister Carmen Hill. That's on Tuesdays from 4.30 to 7.30 p.m. We have also On the, we have a lecture, a concise lecture on the work and life of Marcus Garvey Cry, uh, at the Crash Unity Center welcome, br welcoming brother Ronoko Rashidi as he presents an excellent lecture on the 100 years of Garvey and Garveyism. This year is the 100th anniversary of the founding of the UNIA and the ACL. That'll be Monday, June 23rd at 6 p.m. Here. So you can actually get on our email list, and I think that's, that's most of it, but we have a lot of things going on, brothers and sisters, so we just want you to feel free to keep coming by and seeing what's going on and support this organization. So I'll give it back. Yes. The business mixer. Let's see. Business Mixer is on J Saturday, June 21st at 4 p.m. Okay. Yeah. So give thanks, family, and I'll, I'll give it back to Sabir Bay and, and give thanks for your offerings. We appreciate you. Ashe. Thank you, bruh. <laughs> hey, I got a couple announcements, y'all, before we bring Todd back in on for, I think we're going to take about five questions and, you know, do five questions and answers. Um, but before we get started, I cannot forget to mention my brother Tyler L. has a book out, if you're not, Moors in America. If you didn't get this book, pick this book up. If not, get it later on. But get this book. If, you, if the brother's actually in the back, but pick this book up. And also, we will be in, say that again? The brother's back. How much is the book? The book is 20. That's a movie ticket for two people. I'm just saying. <laughs> But it is. I'm just saying, though. But it's, it's, it's edutainment. Edutainment. Education and entertainment. Yeah, the brother right there. The brother um, Tyler L. Sitting right, sitting right there. Um, also, tomorrow, Brother Taj and I will be up in it's San Francisco. Why do you say Oakland? We San Francisco is on here. It says on a, on a flyer. Hey, I don't know if it says San Francisco. Oh, okay. It did. It just says San Francisco. Then it said Oakland, too, on here. But we will be there tomorrow with Brother Rama L, and it's going to be rebuilding the Asiatic community. Huh? Yeah. Sunday. Listen, I still have jet lag. I just got off the plane, okay? <laughs> Seriously. I'm still stuck in New York. But, um, and Brother Rama L will be speaking on death through food. That's going to be off the hook. But Brother Taj will be building on rebuilding the Asiatic community part two. Um, um, yeah, it's going to be off the hook on Sunday, man. Damn, Jessica will be working. And Jessica Abraham, I got to plug her because she's the one that actually put all our work together in the flyers. Okay, let me see first. If we can, can I widen this up? You got the bootleg phone? Uh, <laughs> Marcus Books. It's X3100 Martin Luther King Jr. Way. That's in Oak, actually in Oakland. How many people are familiar with that? Y'all got to go up to Oakland. Yeah, I got real quiet in here, man. But, um, we go <laughs> real quiet in here, but um, we're gonna turn the mic back over to Brother Taj. We're gonna take five, just five. Then we gotta get out of here. We have to peace, leave. Peace. Um, the brother is first. We was waiting for, for him. Which one? On the end. Give him the mic. Oh, the brother right here. Uh, I want to make a comment. He, don't he said he can't remember. All right. I want to make a comment, good brother. 
Oh, he can't hold it. Hold on one second. How do you get nationalized, like, from the police and all that? No, you get nationalized, period. Well, yeah. See the grand, see the, see the grand sheik? See, see any of these conscious moors here? See this brother right here? Grand sheik? This brother right here? The sheikahs? Qualified people right there. All right, who we now, have? Now, keep in mind, keep in mind, in, uh, in response to that, you don't, uh, um, this, the, there's no question that's wrong, but it indicates a little bit of naivety because you don't get nationalized from the police. Remember, the policemen are private security guards for the insurance companies through the bank that belongs to the Jesuits of Rome. They're not really officers. They're actually a gang. And so when they're profiling our people, they're, they're collecting finance for the insurance companies. That's why he asked you for a license and insurance. They're not, there to, they're not there to help you. They're there to rob you. They're called highwaymen. Policy. Nationalization is the beginning of correcting your status in law that in society at all that you have right of claim of any right of self. We're talking about law status. This is why when Drew Ali says, um, how did the prophet begin to uplift the Moorish Americans? By teaching them to be themselves. In law, that is in propria persona. You must be in your proper person to have claim of right. See, persons who are outside of the human family are referred to as inferiority, uh, uh, constitutional infer inferiority, uh, psychopathic. Yeah, that's a legal term. <laughs> And persons called Negro, black, and colored are held in law as civil or mortus, which is civilly dead. Nationalization corrects that first status, but you're to study so that you can defend it. Because one of the keys that the Europeans set up for enforcing the Christian black codes is to get our people to agree to the brand systems. Once they agree to the brand systems, they're outside of the human family, and international law and constitutional law doesn't apply to them because they're not part of the human family. See, so that's where nationalization comes in to correct the foundation, but it doesn't stop there. It's sort of like uh, you, get, you move in the house, now you gotta furnish it. Meaning that you nationalize, now you have to study to understand its legal implications. And the other yes. thing that I wanna mention, uh, because that's very important uh, when you say you own the house, but you don't. See, anything that is transferred under the US corporation it comes under feudal deeds. What you must do is nationalize, then take this estate and put it in under a lodial title, which is distinguished from deeds. All deeds are feudal. You, when you look at the papers, you'll be listed as a tenant. tenant this is income. why, because of sharecropping. Mm -hmm. This is why they can tax you out of it. This is why we have to teach our people law. Our people really don't know how the system works. But, the, but um, and so what happens is we go through all these grand, beautiful actions of supporting a house like this beautifully, but you really don't own it. You know, and, and you can't. Todd, we have a question over here. I just want, so, so I wanted, so what I would suggest to do, take a copy of it, mark off all important fate, uh, names like, like that, and then put it up there and let you and examine the law, and you'll see that you're a tenant. Don't own the thing. You're renting. We have a question, Todd. So we need to correct that first, then talk about owning the house. Uh, excuse me. Go ahead. Um, you mentioned um, Hillary Clinton in the Benjamin Franklin room and also something that was taking place July 1st. You mentioned something oh, in yeah. the Ben Franklin room and um, also the yeah. something July 1st, if you could Yeah, just House Joint that. Resolution 2847. Now, that's the House Joint Resolution, whereas the United States Corporation, being deputy knights for the Popes of Rome, are going to do a bail-in. They did a bail-out that put you in a deep hole. Now they're going to do a bail-in that's going to take whatever you got. If you got a strong box or deposit box in the bank, it ain't yours. Anything that you have in the banks, they set it up, whereas the Popes of Rome declared anything that you put in the bank, anything that deposits, et cetera, are called un unsecured loans. And at any time they can claim it. It's not yours, it's theirs. 
July the 1st, 2014, because the nations of the earth are dumping the U.S. corporate bonds. This is what the nations of the earth have come to. Because the Pope's war machine cannot be defeated, and because of the hegemony operations of the Christian hegemony of world conquest against Asiatics and Africans, they have decided to stop dealing with the petrodollar as the only weapon that they can use to counter them and start trading in gold, etc. Therefore, the U.S. corporation, knowing that they're in control of the Moroccan estate and the people are waking up, they've got to keep them in that black stage. So they're upping the ante on COINTELPRO operations, paying off more guys to keep promoting that black stuff, and then they sent COINTELPRO operatives to condemn us like we're anti-government or some kind of radical stuff, whatever, you know, when actually we're enforcing the Constitution, just like the prophet said. Um, because really what you have is a de facto governing body in operations. So what they're doing July the 1st officially, although they already started it, is take all the value out of all your savings. So people will think they got retirement funds and all that stuff, it ain't there. And so what's happening, Social Security and all them ordered over 40 million rounds of hollow point bullets for target practice. We have another question, Todd. And I think you know what that's for. We got two more because we're running up Islam. against the clock. Is Islam. I just want Meaning that we need each other now more than we ever did. We just don't know it okay. yet. Hopefully we can get our people some kind of bond together because we're going to need each other desperately. Islam, I just Islam wanted says, to say, I think this question would be to both of you guys. I am really interested in learning more. So just of, you know, the information that you're presenting. I'm always watching you on YouTube, you mm -hmm. know, some mm -hmm. of your, um, your videos. So basically at this point, I just want to be able to get more information on like the foreclosures, the taxes, uh, uh, things yeah. of you you got know, to, court. Let, let's stop so, right here. Let's, let's be very clear with everybody and write this down. The keys, the key on the tax system of the Romans against the Asiacs of the world is the creation of the corpse, the artificial corpse, which was created with the 14th Amendment, which is demonstrated in the movie The Wizard of Oz, The Straw Man. All right. Um, they misclassify the natural person by our people agreeing to be all in brands and not contesting them. They're stateless persons. And as stateless persons, they have no claim of right to any estate. They're not inheritable and they can't transfer, all right? And so they misclassify you and that makes the people a corpse or corporation and therefore they're taxable under what you call international law of, of post tax and duties for doing business in a corpse or corporate capacity. So persons who are called Negro, black and colored are called corpse or zombies. Uh and that's where your tax comes from. So when you nationalize, you can just simply write the Pope's of Rome, tell them that you're, you know, you're the people of the land and they're already obligated to the treaty and stop acting like you don't know. As a matter of fact, send me all the rest of the stuff that I sent before. How about that, Fred? That's how you're supposed to talk. And um, real quick to answer the sister's question, every Wednesday we do civics classes at 1901 Atlantic Avenue. That's where we at. 19 in Long Beach, though, we touch on all these topics, and we also show film there every Wednesday. Seven, actually, there's a couple of um, people who attend the class now. Well, we got a couple, of people, a couple of brothers yeah. and sisters that's actually in the room that attends every week, yeah. faithfully, yeah. on Wednesday. We start at seven o'clock to nine o'clock every Wednesday and in Long all, Beach. And above all, sis, is, is, is that our focus on on you knowing? We don't deal with belief systems. You know, that, that age went out with, with the Piscean age. You're now in the age of Aquarius. You're in a new era of time now. You know, and all men now must declare their free national name and their divine creed in order to be recognized by the nations of the earth. Therefore, you're going to have to learn constitutional law. It's, belief is out. We're giving you keys so that you can do on your own. However, if you come around those who know, we will share with you because it is, what is for you is for us, and we are our brother's keeper. That is the law. That is not a belief. And right. you're not going to get out of this thing with no more emotional prayers. It's going to take work. It's going to take work. Yes. We got um, two more. We got only got two more. Cause yes. Actually, like I said, we got to get out of here 930. Yes. All right. Right, brother, right here. 
Islam, good brother. Islam, praise be to Allah. Uh, you know, honors to, honors to the chairman of the Morris Science Temple of America, yeah. Noble Drali. Um, as far as your, uh, the information that you put out um, for Moors uh, and the uh, way to go about solving, you know, basic problems like driver's license and uh, et cetera. All of that stuff. How, how does that relate to the t structure of the actual temple? It does. Uh, Let me explain to you how it does. All right. Listen to you all. Listen to me, you all. Now, we'll make a statement, and you analyze it for yourself. Help me in my mission to bring my people back into the constitutional fold of government, enforcing our Constitution for the United States of America. After they assassinated Noble Drali, representatives of the popes and Skull and Bones and Knights of Malta met. Franklin Delano Roosevelt, in 1933, they had congressional records. Go look at this yourself. House Joint Resolution. Seventy-third Congress in session, 192. And this is where they made up the demo order, democracy order, to overthrow the republic from within. And that's where your driver's license came, where they blood you or bleed you, transferring a birthright into a sellable, alienable right to kill your families, slow walking. Now you tell me what does that have to do with the operations of the temple when it's a national and divine movement. And he also said this, I'm going to keep some of these Europeans here just long enough to teach you all government. However, they got a lot of water to take on. They're both three, oh, over 3,000 miles from home. He said, but I'm going to keep some of them here until they teach you government. Now, listen to me. I'm asking you, what does that have to do with the driver's license? I say everything, because they've been destroying our families when men can't go take care of their families because they can't travel on their own land under commercial law when they're natural people. And they've been listed as commercial beings, and they haven't contested it because they don't know about nationality. However, you've got all these grand sheiks that had this information. And they got these temples in these communities, and half these people don't know that they're temples or what they're for. They think they're reverse churches. Right. Ask that question again. Don't get me started. Peace, Todd. We have one more because we got three minutes. So we're going to take this last one, and we got to wrap up. Islam. Islam. Uh, my question is, when you go to court um, and you're in your proper person. In appropriate persona, sujuris. Right. Um, and you're trying to establish your nationality, right, um, to the... That's understandable, but correct. before you even finish, let me correct this. Mm -hmm. uh, courtroom is society. Anything that goes into the Christian courtrooms is, is at a point of what you call litigation. All rich, prerogatory rich, are to be presented to the magistrate and the prosecutor before you even enter. Correct. They're supposed to come from the Adam chamber, but right. since they don't come from the Adam chamber, we're going to make sure that you all know how to protect your birthright. So you do rich, prerogatory rich, and they go to the prosecutor and to the judge. As soon as the judge starts talking trash, some, oh, excuse me, Fred, uh, you prosecuting? Now, if you are, what I want you to do is get down and swear in. You just disrobed him because he's supposed to be a neutral party. Then you bring up Article 6 of the Constitution. Drawley State enforced the Constitution, right? All desk contracts engaged in two before the adoption of this Constitution shall be what? Binding against the United, against, not for, against the United States under this Constitution as under the Confederation, which means there's more than one law, one law working. Remember the letter I wrote, George Washington? Huh? And all treaties made or which shall be made in pursuance thereof shall be the supreme law of the land. How come these Moors don't use that treaty when they get these traffic tickets? That's right there in that Constitution. 
Ask me again, what does that have to do with the Moorish Science Temple? Everything. Everything. The fact that you've had people misadministering it is not to be confused with the temple, because the temple is right. However, your caveat emptor has not been carried out. I say it needs to be. But nevertheless, we will take this information to the common people. We have asked the Pharisees and the Sadducees to do their job. They refuse to. And it is taken to the common man. Now they're upset. The money changers. Oh, like really? I'm getting mad. Get me started. Yo, I want to thank everybody, man. We got to wrap up. But let me finish. Not, yeah, we, we got to wrap up. But let we got to wrap up. Out. Yeah, but let me throw this out. Let me throw this out. Remember this, you all. All of them magi, magistrates are magi. They're all high priests. They are priests just like the reverends behind the pulpit. They're all priests. And they're all partners. So don't you ever think that they're separate. The deal of it is you're supposed to know who you are. So when you come into that courtroom of that crux, it is supposed to be entered on paper because the word is power. Before you even enter that courtroom, you ain't supposed to even be there. But anyway, since you, they do, do to be there, do the writ or quo warranto. What you want, keep this in mind, everybody, because we're going to close out. Every public servant must have a charter and a bond. Yes. That's license and insurance. Yep. Same thing when, when cops stop you. Oh, let me see your charter and bond. Fred, watch them start covering their badge. Why? Because they're highwaymen. They only been taking advantage of these people because these Moors ain't been teaching them. We should not be suffering them nigger acts. This movement been on this cycle 101 years now. Let's fix this thing, you all. Hope you learned something. Hope y'all learned you all. something. Thank you for coming out. Give yourselves a round of applause. Peace. Don't forget to check us out every Tuesday on the Sabir Bay Show, LA Talk Live. No Ramona stuff. Africa will be there this Tuesday. If you are in the, on the East Coast, it's 6 p.m. I want to thank everybody. Get home safe. Until next time, peace. Hey, I want to, before we even end, I got to thank a couple of people. I have to thank Karen McGee, Keith Washington, my team, Salvador, Alberto.